This is shuttle launch control at T minus three hours, 29 minutes, 45 seconds and counting. From Launch Complex 39 at the Kennedy Space Center, we are now in the final six hours of the countdown for the launch of the Space Shuttle Columbia on mission STS-94. The countdown is being controlled from firing room one at the Launch Control Center, and we are on schedule for a liftoff at 1.50 p.m. Eastern Time this afternoon. And here now is the STS-94 flight crew, all assembled for breakfast. On the end, payload specialist Greg Lynn Tiras, followed by mission specialist Don Thomas, mission specialist Mike Gernhardt in S3, our commander, Jim Halsell, our pilot Susan Still, our payload commander Janice Foss, and payload specialist Dr. Roger Crouch. There's our commander, Jim Halsell, being assisted with his launch and entry suit. And our pilot, Susan Still, with her helmet on as if she's ready to go. And our payload commander, mission specialist number one, Janice Foss. will be heading out for the launch pad in about another 15 minutes and then payload specialist Roger Crouch. Mission specialist number three Mike Gernhardt. I'm sorry number two MS number two Mike Gernhardt. And here is mission specialist Don Thomas. Payload Specialist Greg Lentiris. And here we see our STS-94 astronauts now leaving the suit-up room headed for the elevator. And here they come. On every space flight I've ever been on, I've always come back with the idea of, boy, you know, if I could do that again, I would do it differently. This, this is what I should have done. Or now that I know, now that I'm experienced, I'll do it differently next time. But instead of waiting years, perhaps, for the next flight opportunity to put those lessons into effect, uh, my crew will get the opportunity to do it in just a matter of months. So it is just, it's a fantastic opportunity. This is shuttle launch control at T minus two hours, 19 minutes, 55 seconds and counting. 
where we see MS number two, Don Thomas, being assisted with his backpack and launch and entry suit. And he will be sitting in the aft center seat on the flight deck as our mission engineer. This is shuttle launch control at T, at T minus two hours, 12 minutes and counting, where we see payload commander Janice Voss. NTD Houston flight on 212. We have just gotten a go forecast for RTLS and also a go observation, so we are uh, go for launch at this time. Copy flight, thank you, and we're ready for a recorder activation. And we'll put that in work. Launch director, 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 manager. Go ahead. Jim, the MMT has no other issues. Uh, you're now cleared to launch. Copy that. And uh, Columbia, it looks like we've got the weather lined up with us, so we're going to uh, try and get you guys out of here. So have a good flight, and NTD, you're clear to launch. I copy. C3 copy. Thank you, Jim. Engines are gimbling now. Steering check on the main engines. Minus two minutes, 15 seconds. O2C, are we going to close and lock your visors, initiate O2 flow? I wish you got free, Columbia, keep the dream alive. As you that, thank you. We want to congratulate everybody here at the Cape who made this record-breaking turnaround possible. We'll take good care of the ship and see you in 16 days. 10, T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Main engine start. Three, two, one, zero, and liftoff of Columbia with the Microgravity Science Laboratory, a research bridge to the International Space Station. We'll pull that out, Houston. Roger, roll, Columbia. Houston is now controlling. Roll maneuver is uh, complete aboard Columbia. The orbiter is now in a heads down position on course for a 28 and a half degree, 160 nautical mile orbit.
Now at 30 seconds, the uh, three engines aboard the orbiter will begin uh, throttling down as the vehicle prepares to pass through the area of the maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle. Having just passed through that area of maximum dynamic pressure, the three engines are preparing to begin a throttle back up. Columbia, go with throttle up. Copy, go with throttle up. One minute, 20 seconds. The three liquid-fueled engines are back at full throttle. Good fuel cells, electrical producing fuel cells aboard the orbiter and uh, hydraulic systems all in good shape. Columbia is now traveling 1,900 miles per hour, already downrange from the launch site, 11 and a half uh, miles at an altitude of 18 miles. Standing by for a burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket boosters, which signals the end of first stage. SRB separation is confirmed two minutes, 15 seconds into the flight. Columbia is now at an altitude of 31 miles downrange from the launch site, 35 miles. Columbia, performance is nominal. Copy, performance nominal. Straight up, that takes away the line. Uh, can you guys take take flight deck? I'll give you a downlink flight deck and let me know if you have an image. Okay, we're we're looking at it now. Okay, this should be about 30 seconds prior to liftoff, if I've got it queued up correctly. We know that uh, Bob Cabana and the STA guys and the weather Capcoms and the weather flight director and everybody have been uh, have been working the weather real hard for our TLS weather. And, uh, and in fact, when we passed over Florida at the first rail, we saw the thunderstorm. Here's the launch. And uh, the launch is just, uh, just as incredible as we always try to describe that it is. You just saw SRB ignition right there. Um, it's just a real kick in the pants when those solid rocket boosters ignite. You can see a lanyard in the uh, foreground there from one of the checklists. We tried to uh, skew the camera slightly over to give a better view of Susan and Emma and Mike and, uh, and Janice there. Before you know it, you're heading, uh, you're going supersonic at about uh, 35, 40 seconds MET at an altitude of about 23,000 feet. The wind noise right now is just about at its maximum. You can hear the wind uh, at 450 knots or so, uh, equivalent airspeed as we hit max Q. It's kind of a it's kind of a whining sound that you don't get in the simulator. That's a little bit different here in the real vehicle. And then as you go through Max Q on the other side, the the wind noise starts to die down. You might be able to see the lighting is uh, diminishing as we uh, get up into the darker skies. just before solid rocket uh, booster separation. I mean, you can still t tell those things are cranking, but uh, it's not nearly as rough as it was when we first came off the pad. There you saw the flash from the solid rocket booster separation. You can see from the uh, lack of vibration of all the bodies just how smooth it gets in the second stage. It's just incredibly smooth. Mike took Susan's uh, cue 
cue card that she had placed over her HUD uh, to prevent the sun, sun from coming into her eyes like it was right there on the launch pad. And in second stage, we raise our visors. Right there, you saw uh, Miko. The G-forces came off the body. And the uh, 3Gs is still 3Gs, and 0G is still 0G. It still feels great to be up here. And uh, we should appreciate all the hard work that went into the quick turnaround and then uh, the work by the asset team to get us up here on the, uh, around all those thunderstorms. Columbia, Houston, Janice and Roger, welcome back to Space Lab. Thanks, Mike. It's good to be back. 